First, we're looking at this ratio one. Now, um, it is a tricky thing to try and keep all of the ideas in your head. Um, there's a lot of, sorry, I think I'm on top of something. Sorry, yeah, that's, I'm in your way, sorry about that. Um, I think you can see as well, um, I have used, you know, you can use a highlighter or a pen or whatever so that you can sift all the important information out of this question because there's a lot there to keep in mind, okay? So the first thing, obviously, is to understand, okay, this ratio, that's really going to matter to me. Um, you can see I've underlined the four and the five. What do you think that's about? Why have I particularly done those two? Because there's a transfer from one to the other. Very good. You can see, in fact, we did a question like this a while ago. Um, she moves $6,000. So I should say she moves $6,000. What's changing is bonds to, I should have highlighted this too, bonds to shares, right? So you can see which direction the money is going in and the, the, ratio that, the ratios that are affected are the four and the five, okay? So that's why I've highlighted them in particular. So let me now start to walk through. Um, for the first part over here on the left-hand side, I think most people were okay with this bit. They are okay with this. One part... There are going to be 12 parts in total. Where do I get that number 12 from? Yeah, very good. So if I were to dish that all out, I've got to slice it into 12 pieces first, then three go here, four go here, five go there. Okay. If there are 12 parts, then every part is going to be, and you can see me doing the calculation there, you divide by 12, and that gives you the size of each one of the chunks. Okay. Now, um, we talked earlier about like words and that kind of thing. I have said there's an old ratio and then there's a new ratio and I've distinguished them verbally. I don't know how else you'd do that in a nice, neat, unambiguous way. Um, basically, we're trying to guess. If, for example, your solution looked like this, which um, several solutions did, right? We basically had to say, okay, I think this is what they're doing because three, four, five is in the question and the next line comes from that ratio and so on. But I hope you can see when you compare that to that, this is clearly much better communicated, <coughs> right? So these words, it'll take you like a second to write old and new. That's all you really had to do, okay? Now, uh, remember we were pointing out, okay, $6,000 moves. So you can see in um, these two lines here where the movement is of money is. Can you see the numbers that change? Can you see the change there? Um, do you see that $6,000 has moved from here to here, right? Which is why this number is 6,000 smaller and this one is 6,000 bigger, okay? Once you got your dollar amounts, there's only one step left. Can someone tell me how do I go from this second last line here to this six to seven to 11 ratio? What did I do? I've simplified this ratio. What did I actually like numerically do with the ratio to simplify it? Well, you divide by 12,000, but then you double it. So. Okay, so dividing by 12,000, that's kind of a good strategy to take because each of the parts was 12,000 before. However, we've mucked around with the parts, yeah? So 12,000 is actually gonna give you some fractions and that kind of thing, some 0.5s. So another way to do this, uh, and that kind of depends on the numbers you get, is to have a look at the numbers you get in your new ratio. Have a look at those, okay? The way to get that down to the simplest ratio that's possible is to think, well, what's the biggest number that I can divide every single one of those through and still end up with whole numbers, okay? Um, think about this like when we were doing fractions. If I gave you this fraction here, 10 over 15, you all know we can write this in a simpler way. I have to divide the top and bottom by something. What do I divide by? Five, right? If you divide by five, you get two over three. And that's the simplest way you can write this, okay? So I divided by 6,000 and that's what gave me my final answer. All right, uh, I'm gonna move on to the next page. So if you wanna have a look at your solution for number 10. <clears throat> uh, Divya and Bahini are on that 110 kilometer per hour highway. She looks at her phone and then she looks up. Okay, so the question itself is, how many meters have they traveled in that time, right? So the first thing you notice is that the question is about meters but the rate you've been given is not in meters. Do you notice that? Where is the rate? It's, it's the first line, right? 110 kilometers per hour, okay? So that's why you can see in my working, the very first thing I have to do is I have to convert kilometers into meters, but that's not all. What other conversion do you see? Have a look at my working. What else have I converted and why? Have a look at my top line of working. 
What have I converted? You've got the other part of the ratio, right? Commas were per hour before, yeah, and I want them in seconds. Why do I want them in seconds for? Yeah, good. The question has provided to me a time, and that's in seconds. So it makes sense to try and convert both of the units into both of the units that the question is giving me. Okay. Um, once you've got 110,000 divided by 3,600, that's where this number comes from. And what do you do with that number to turn into the actual distance? Yeah, you say, well, that's every second. Every second you go that far, which is really far in a second because 110 kilometers per hour is really fast, right? So if that's one second, then I'm going to say in 15 seconds, I, I multiply through. And that's what gives me my distance, okay? So that's question 10. Does anyone want to ask clarifying questions on that? Is that still, yeah? No. Yeah, okay, excellent. What's next? 13. Okay, let's have a look. Next page. Okay, this is a tricky question. So let's step through it um, nice and slowly, okay? Um, just like the first question we did, whatever it was, eight or something like that, there's a lot of words here and a lot of information packed into this space. So you have to read really carefully. Uh, Charmaine is trying to get fuel ready for her leaf blower. Um, you'll notice as well, the question says that fuel is made up of petrol and oil. We've got these two parts, the question gives that to you. Okay. And it also provides the ratio. She's got six liters of petrol, and we want to work out how much oil she needs to add. So I want you to have a look at my working there. Start with the left-hand side. Okay, I've just written down petrol to oil is 30 to 1. That's literally just the ratio that's been given to me. Okay, So how do I turn that? What have I done to turn that into the next line? Five five. Yeah, I see. Okay, 30 to 1. 30 liters to one liter, 30 mils to one mil. But what I actually have, or what Charmaine has rather, is six liters right there, six liters. So that number there on the left-hand side, the 30, that represents petrol. So I want to turn that, let's choose a new color. I want to turn that into six. So I divide it by five, which means I divide that by five, and that's where my numbers come from, okay? Six liters petrol, one fifth of a liter of oil, which you could have converted to mils if you liked, but you didn't have to, okay? All right, now, here it gets a bit tricky. Um, read carefully with me, and let's read, read nice and slowly. Charmaine has 3.1 liters of fuel left in her container after filling her leaf blower. Does this, are you seeing how this continues from the previous question, right? She made up this amount, she started pouring it in, it's like, oh, I'm done, okay? So now she's got this leftover. She wants to use this fuel for her lawnmower, but her lawnmower requires the petrol and oil to be mixed in a different ratio, okay? So think about this, 30 to one versus 25 to one. Which one has more petrol and which one has more oil? When you compare the leaf blower and the lawnmower, what do you think? The lawnmower needs more oil, right? Needs more oil? because you've got a smaller, a smaller ratio of petrol in there to the same amount of oil, okay, good. So that's why the question says, how much oil should she add so that we get it in the right ratio, okay? So remember back to this first part of the question, right? We had no oil, we had no oil, we had the amount of petrol, and then we said, well, okay, for that amount of petrol, here's the amount of oil you need, okay? For part two, it's been complicated because there's already some oil in there, right? So clearly the first part of the question, and you can see here, this is my first line. The first thing you have to do is work out, well, how much is there of each part? Like how much is actually petrol and how much is actually oil? Now, you can see what I've done. Um, I've g given my answer over here, but where did I get those numbers from? Where did the three liters of petrol and 0.1 liters of oil where did I get them from? Okay, very good. I looked back up to here. See this, that 30 to one, okay? If there's 3.1, you can think of it as 31 parts. 31 parts, right? Do you remember that question we did with the um, three, four, five? There were 12 parts. Well here, um, 30 to one, there's 30 parts here, one part here, 31 in total. If I've got 3.1 liters and there are 31 parts, how big is each part? 3.1 liters, 31 parts. You just have to divide through, right? And that gives you 0 0.1 of a liter or 100 mils.
okay? And that's where I've got this number from, and I know that there's 30 times as much petrol in there, so that's where I get this number from, okay? So, then the final part of the question is, and this is what the second mark is for, all right, I've got 100 mils of oil, but I'm not, I'm not supposed to have 100 mils of oil, right? So then I treat this as a whole new question right here. The ratio is supposed to be 25 to one. So I go through just like I did for part one. I said, okay, there's three liters of petrol. How much oil am I supposed to have? There's the number there. What do I do with that to answer the question? What do I do with that amount? I'm, I'm short, right? I'm, I'm short 100 mils. That's what you told me at the beginning, that I don't have enough oil. I already have 100 mils. I worked that out in my first line. So I've got to add an extra 20 and that's the quantity, okay? So a lot's going on in that question, right? A huge amount. If it's still a bit murky to you, I encourage you to come back to this solution. I hope as you step through it, if you understand why I'm writing every number, then you'll be able to make sense of it. I'm a bit confused how I, I got the, like I was four mils over. Four mils over, okay. I'm not sure where the four mils Probably what's happened is if you remember um, yesterday's, no, the day before's lesson. Um, on Monday, when we were having a look at uh, the person who got a 3% pay rise, do you remember that one? Oh, yeah. um, someone got a 3% pay rise and then they got some amount and we wanted to know what their salary was before, okay? So the difference will be, is it 3% of what you were before or 3% of what you are now? And there was that tiny dollar amount, right? The four mils is almost certainly, you've done the ratio for a different amount, like where you started rather than where you ended. And I can have a look at your numbers and I can probably dissect where it happened, but that's why there'd be a small difference. Um, that's where those creep in, okay?